A few, a few days ago, a minister pastoring in a large city uh, said, shall I have a lot of revival meetings, uh, like one every month at least, or shall I have just maybe one or two a year? Uh, a, a young man, but still had a large audience, congregation. And I said, well, uh, there are two principles of truth. What you do to create a good church is one thing. What you do to keep a good church is another thing. They're two, two different operations. If you have a crowd of a thousand and you start beating them, be here, be here for a crusade every week, be here, they'll get where you, you'll work them to death, you know. But if you don't have a and you're trying to build an audience, well, you build every day. So I said, there are two different things. If you've got it, you're careful with it, not to lose it. I've seen revival crusades where the church came up with less people in the end than it started with. Well, that's bad. That's bad. But uh, there are two different things. If you've got prosperity, how are you going to keep it? If you don't have it, how do you get it? Now, there are two different things altogether. And the things that you do to get it, sometimes are not the things you do to keep it. Now, now. This is our, <laughs> our final lesson, and not that we're finished with the subject at all, but it's, it's ten lessons in the secrets of prosperity, and I hope that you've enjoyed them very much. And, and we're going to deal with this last one here, uh, ways to continue in your prosperity, because we want you to continue in it. You know, we want you to keep it. And it, it's, it's nice to, you know, to have it. It's better to keep it. And there are millions of people that had it, and now they don't have it. And so how do you keep it? And I'd like to begin with you in the oldest book in the world, which is called the book of Job. In chapter 36 and verse 11, it says, If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Now, now, here you have a formula that God gave in the first book ever written for human beings. It's amazing how ignorant we can be when something has been in existence for 6,000 years. You know, now he says here, if you will obey and serve God, you know, if you just obey and serve God, that at that point, you will spend your days in prosperity. God is not willing that anybody be poor. Get that out of your system. Poverty comes from bad decisions and bad living. And if you can get bad living and bad decisions out and keep your mind alert, you know, good things begin to happen. And then you then you build with them and, and you invest with them and you grow in them, you see. And... Uh, here in South Bend, where our church is and our headquarters, I bought that 10 acres there. It's now 27 acres. We bought property adjoining it. When I bought that 10 acres for 40, I think it's either $42,500 or something like that, it's, it's worth a million dollars today. I paid on it for 15 years at, at the bank, and, and then I gave it to the church as a gift because it's the most beautiful piece of property in town. And I just gave it away to the church after paying on it for 15 years at, at, down at the bank. And I imagine 50% of what I paid was interest money, you see, and the other half was, was principal money. But look at the investment. That that investment of 42500 is now worth a million. You couldn't buy that kind of property, maybe for any price. But it, it, with that kind of a front on it, it it's, it's got a, well, over 600 feet just right on Ireland Road alone, right in front of the golf course. And, and, and it's a beautiful location, the highest, one of the highest spots in the whole city. But you see, making the right investment, look at the proceeds that came forth from it. If one was commercial, and they, they could build all kinds of condominiums and make all kinds of things in that beautiful spot there and make it a luxury spot, you know, for the whole area. But it is used for the best thing. It's used now for a school, and it's now used for a church, and, and I am so happy for it. I am so very happy for it. Now, if you'll obey and serve God, he says, then you shall spend your days in prosperity, all your days, and your years in pleasures. Prosperity and pleasure goes together. Total prosperity brings total pleasure. Now, if you, if you have a, a, a form of prosperity, how can you retain it? How can you keep it? How can you continue in it? Point number one is this, that you must think before you invest. Just because, just because you have been successful does not mean, nor does it guarantee your future in success. That's where a lot of people think they become impregnable to failure. <laughs> That's your first step of failure right there. And, and so think before you invest. I have known so many, oh, oh, so many <laughs> people that, 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 that would buy, that would buy a, a lot in Florida. Are you here? And they get down there and it's covered with water. You know, you can't even get to it. 
You didn't go look and see what you bought. And I, I we've been given, our org has been given maybe 10 or 12 lots down there, simply because people got down and said, oh my God, they didn't tell me that it was that way when I lived in Chicago. Yeah, you know, if you're going to invest blindfolded, you're going to get that kind of results for it. So number one, think before you invest. If you're going to retain the prosperity that God has given you, use your head and think before you reinvest. All right. The number two is, and this is a great one, don't change directions quickly or suddenly. I, I've known of pastors, you know, that were doing their church this way and this way. Suddenly they made a turn and lost half of their people. I mean half of them. Now I could name them for you in this country right now that they made a quick turn. Now quick turns don't work anywhere, whether, whether it's in business or whether it's in churches. If I try to make a quick turn with my large church, who? I'd lose them. I'm not going to do that. If there's a turn to be made, it's going to be a slow one. And they're going to be taught what it's all about and decide with it before the decision ever becomes made. Now, that's the proper way to do a thing. If you have a truth, don't keep it. Spread it, you see. And it's more so in business. If you are an oil man, don't think that just because you're an oil man, you can become a moon man and start putting satellites to the moon. There's a difference in satellites toward the moon and the oil you're getting out of the earth. You make a drastic millions of men lose their investment because they make a sharp turn in something they don't understand and they don't know anything about it. And because of that, because of changing their direction suddenly, they find themselves broken and defeated. Some commit suicide, some die in poverty, dreaming of what they used to have and don't have anymore. Please be careful. Don't change directions suddenly. And talk to some nice people that are in the same kind of thing before you make... And don't think you know it all, because when you do, you're going to, well, that's our next point. If you've been blessed already, don't become conceited about it. Uh, that's, that's one of the problems uh, of, a, of a wealthy man. He, he doesn't think anybody in the shop uh, knows as much as he knows, you know. Uh, you can work for him for 10 years, and he doesn't think you know as much as, you may know 10 times as much as he knows. Because he, he's out there dealing with other problems, and you're dealing with the making of the, of the intrinsic things that come out of the shop. And so be a good listener and, and keep learning. Because if you can't do that, it's very likely you will not be able to retain and to maintain the prosperity that God has given you. So remember to keep your prosperity. Don't become conceited and think you know everything because God has blessed you. Listen to others. And if you'll do that, you'll find that God will bless you more and bless you more again. Uh, that's number three. Number, number four is uh, keep your pace up. Don't let down. Now, that, that's the reason our, our American cars, you know, got so far behind other countries. They let down. We were building the best cars in the world, and everybody in the world knew it. And suddenly, we were not building the best cars in the world, and, and nobody knew it. You see? When, when I first went to the Philippines, uh, way back about 1950, one-third of all the automobiles in Manila uh, were, were, were Studebakers out of the Studebaker plant in South Bend, Indiana. Brother, You'd have to go to a museum to find one of them now. 98% of all the cars in Manila are made in Japan today. 98% of all the cars in Manila, though the Philippines is our friend, is made in Japan. You say, why? They are alert for business. They don't let down anywhere. And whether you're an automobile manufacturer or a trailer manufacturer or a farmer, at the point you let down, you're going into weakness. You're also going into failure. And you're also going in a place to lose your prosperity that you had already gained. So don't let down. Keep the same pace. I have to be honest with you. My pace is stronger now than it's ever been in my life. I move further, faster than ever before. My pace is in there going. And when somebody don't keep up with me, I get upset. And I, if you want me to quarrel with you, just sit down and I'll have a quarrel with you. Because I am paced for life. And I don't. Well, I have a saying. Maybe you ought to write it down in your own book. And my saying is this. Nothing I have ever done, nothing I am doing, is nearly so great as what I'm going to do for Jesus. Now, you see, you don't rest on your laurels. You don't say, well, now, now it's time to coast. Coasting people go down. Coasting people never go up. You can't coast up. You got it? You can only coast down. And if you want your business to go down, if you want your home to go down, if you want your life to go down, coast and it'll go down. Building a beautiful home 
I mean members of the family, you don't coast on that either. If you want a good family, you work for it. You pay for it, and you get that part of it too. Uh, and if you don't, you just will not have a good family. So here they are, point number two, uh, don't change your direction quickly. Uh, point number three, don't become conceited and think nobody knows anything but you. Listen to the people that work with you and around you. Don't let down the real cause, the real cause of businesses to go into bankruptcy is that they stop producing. They, they, they're not competitive, and they let down. And in letting down, uh, they, they, they lost. All right, number five is, don't forget your source. Now, now, now I, I think maybe that is the easiest thing to forget, is your source. You know, God gives you strength. God gives you eyesight. <laughs> God gives you ability to speak from your brain. And God, God gives you y your physical strength. God gives you health in your stomach, you see. And, and so, don't forget your source. And, and from your spiritual source, uh, let's look another way. Did somebody really help you, an uncle or an aunt or an older brother or, or, a, or, or a friend? There are people that will help a friend go into business. I know of a young man in California uh, who worked in a television station, and he had very much of nothing uh, when he left there. And a friend of mine uh, said, I'd like to help you. And he taught him how to get into the satellite business, and he made millions with satellites, millions. He'd write his name down to have three or four transponders that are his and signed for them without a payment on them. And before he made the first payment, somebody would say, hey, I'd like to have one. He would say, that's one million dollars. <laughs> he made millions. Now, if he forgets this friend of mine and, and, and says, well, I don't care to have him for a friend anymore, he is an ungrateful person. And he might need that friend more in the future than he has in the past. And if he's lost him, then he has, he has lost him. So we must not forget our source. Our source is tremendously important. Uh, that where do we get it from? Now, you get your good living and you get your health from God. And if you forget that source, for sure you're headed for problems, troubles, or heartaches, uh, de defeat, and maybe even disgrace. That, that is so true. So uh, keep your source in mind that you, you got these things in there. And then if you've had a person, if you've had a person that is a good person that has helped you, maybe given you an idea, or maybe stood surety for you, <laughs> which is bad business. Uh, we, uh, for whatever, uh, don't forget friends. Don't forget your source. Please don't. There are people that forget their source, and they become as nothing. Oh, you helped me a little bit, didn't mean anything. If you're ungrateful and unthankful, uh, you're going to terminate pretty soon because those kind of people do not go very far. So please don't forget your source, especially your spiritual source, which is God, and then your natural source, which is parts of the family or friendship. The next one is uh, keep up with the industry. Now, it, it, it might be farming, but you can't farm like your great-grandpa did in this world that we live in today. You can't just farm five acres either like your grandma did. No, no not in this day you can't. You, you might have two generations ago, but not in this day. You have to keep up with your competition and with your, your industry. And this means activity mentally and, and physically. Ah, friends, every day of the world, there are companies going into bankruptcy. The only reason for it, they did not keep up with the industry. Automobiles, oh, there have been 50 different automobile companies in this country that 50 years ago were making automobiles. They're not making them anymore. They could not keep up with the industry. You say, why didn't they do it? Well, they got conceited. They got to thinking they had something, and they didn't push hard. They didn't fight hard. They didn't advertise hard. They didn't sell hard, and they lost their place in the industry. Life is competitive. Always stay in there, making the best mousetrap there is, because it is said, that multitudes will beat a path to your door if you make a better mousetrap than the man next door. And so what you need to do is to stay competitive. You, you, need, to, uh, you need to grow constantly. And, and if you don't keep up with the industry, uh, you'll lose out. Now, I'd, I'd like to bless our ministers that are watching. There are ministers watching me that maybe you have now a large group of people, 500, 1,000. Uh, did you know it can slip if you had a thousand back to 800 and 700 down to 400 and 300 you say oh hey 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 what's up you didn't keep up with the world that we're moving in today uh, you didn't like the kind of music that was being sung today 
Uh, you didn't like the kind of preaching that touches people's hearts today. Uh, you were in a pattern here 10 or 20 years ago. You're still in the same pattern. Now, uh, that's true with churches as well as it is business, that if you don't keep up with the industry, you're going to lose out. There are pastors that go around town grumbling and says, you know, such, such a church got my members. Such a church got my members. Well, well, don't blame the church. Blame yourself. Yourself. You weren't exciting enough. <laughs> People don't need to belong to your church. I don't care what it is. This is a free world we live in today. People can belong wherever they want to. They can go to church where they get the most fun. And if you're up there drab and as if you're sad about something, they don't have to come listen to you. If you're going to be great in this world, keep up with the industry. And, and look around and see what others are doing and stay up with them. When you lag behind, uh, you're going to be in trouble. We always say to somebody starting off in business, package, package your business attractively. <laughs> Did you know that there are times uh, when you can buy perfume and the bottle costs more than what's in it? Yeah. You say, why? They're going to sell it. And they package it attractively. Did you know sometimes you can buy uh, breakfast for cereal and the package costs more than the contents? And why? They're determined to sell it. And so let's package whatever we have beautifully, especially church work. Let's show the people how beautiful church is and how beautiful Jesus is. Not how drab and how awful he is, but how, how beautiful he is. There, there's some that, are, that don't think Christianity is beautiful, and they don't think that it is resourceful. Uh, I've had people say, well, I can't join the church. Everybody in the church is poor. Oh, they're not. Don't miss it there. God has many, 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 many millionaires and multimillionaires that love Him and serve Him very faithfully, and many men in political office, the same, the same. And so, don't ever be deceived by that. Uh, and coming to God does not make you a sad old sack. You better believe it. You better believe it. You heard of the little boy that was sent down to the railway station to bring the evangelist that was going to preach in the church. And they said, go down and bring up the, the preacher that's going to preach for us. He went down to the railroad station and he looked at everybody getting off the train. And, and he, he, he couldn't see anybody that he thought was the preacher, you know, for their church. And finally, an old man got off that was uh, crippled with arthritis, you know, crippled like this. And so he walked up. He says, uh, sir, I've come down to the station here to find the preacher for our church. Uh, would, would, you, would you be the preacher? And the old man looked at him and kind of grunted and said, no, son, uh, says it was arthritis that made me look like this. There are people that think that if you're in the ministry, you should look, you know, out of style, out of date, good for nothing. They think that churches ought to be at least 100 years behind the times. Well, I've got good news for you. You're not in it at all. <laughs> yeah, we, we got pastors in this country that they are beyond tomorrow already. We have churches in this country that do business. They do business as good as any bank or better than any bank in the city. We have keen business abilities uh, in our great stratum of, of religion in our country today. And, and we, we thank God, you know, uh, for, for such a thing. And we want you to, to know that. But you have to stay up, you know, with the business if you don't you're going to fall behind. Uh, maybe our automobile companies could teach us a lot that at the moment they didn't stay up with the industry, they lost the business to somebody else. Now, the next one, and, and we'd like to say this with deep sincerity. Uh, you, you may be a genius, you see, but you should train your personnel well. You know, it don't matter how good you are, if the others around you are not good, you got a bunch of junk coming out of your place. And so your personnel around you should be given the, you know, the abilities that you have. They should be talked to in conference, and, and they should be dealt with tenderly, and that they might, that they might have the same adroit business capabilities that God has placed within you. And they cannot have these without training. So let's, let's train those around us. Lift them up along with us. Uh, let them lift up high and say, hey, we want you to grow. We want you to be great. We want you to know as much as I do about this thing. And so uh, train your personnel well. If you're going to stay prosperous, you know, <laughs> yeah, a, a, a bunch of dullards cannot make a prosperous business. And people making mistakes for you can only cost you money. And so let's do it and do it well. And, and, and number eight, if you'll permit me to, to say this, uh, require loyalty and, and talk loyalty. I don't understand any person taking a, a salary check from anybody and talking against that firm. And I hear it almost every day. My, my, my business is this and that and the other and that and the other and that and the other. And they downgrade their source of income. You have no right to bite 
the hand that feeds you. I don't care who you are. If you can't praise a company that you work, get out of it. Don't, don't take the check every week. That, that is absolutely dishonest. And if you don't put in a good day's work every day, you're a thief and a robber. And if you don't think God keeps books, wait till you die. It'll be too late then to change it because God will say, here you got paid for eight hours, you put in four. Oh, 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 oh. God said, don't owe me. I want to tell you something. You don't get to heaven being, being that way. And so you'll miss heaven. You, you, you've, you've robbed and stolen and you, you will miss heaven. Therefore, uh, loyalty builds any organization. The more loyalty you have, there are people that will die for a company. Well, that's the only way to make it great. Why do the Japanese outproduce many nations of the world? They have the keenest loyalty among their laborers of any nation on the face of this earth. There is no nation that has as much loyalty built in uh, from the people that own a plant to the people that operate it on the face of the earth. The people that own that plant, they take such tender care of those. And those down there are so meticulous to get everything right. And so, in working together, they flood the world markets with merchandise. Isn't that great? I say it's great. Why don't we do that in America? Why doesn't the businessman love the people that work for him? Why don't the people that work for him love the man that employs them? And if you do that, you will have nothing but greatness. I had a, a businessman tell me, he must have had a hundred people working for him. He looked at me and he said, you know, Sumrall, he says, when a person stops bragging on me, I just fire him. Whew. People have to brag on you. Well, he says, if they don't esteem me highly, they're not worth anything to me. I only want people working for me that know that I have a product that's worth putting out and they brag on the product and then they say, I was the man that produced it. And that means bragging on me. And as soon as he says, this product's no good, this product is not up to others, I, then he is of no value to my company. As long as he's saying, well, I can go somewhere else and get a better deal than this, he ought to go immediately because he is not serving his company well. So you've got to build in loyalty that comes through teaching and that comes through loving. And so God wants you to do, if you'll do that, you will have within you the ingredients of, a, of, of continued prosperity and greatness. The next, the next of the ways to continue prosperity is don't make, don't make foolish decisions. Now, now, you became prosperous through wise decisions. If you go and buy something that you want and pay an outlandish interest, you know, 12, 15, 20, 22% interest, you, you're, you're a bad businessman. I don't care how much you've got now. You're not going to have it very much longer. You have made a foolish decision and in making it. If you go and make a poor investment, Banks will tell you this. You make a few poor investments, and it don't matter how good you are, you're not going to be good long. It don't matter how wealthy you are, you're not going to be wealthy long. I knew of a man in, in, in Detroit that, that sold a radio station for $8 million. And a couple of years later, he had made such poor investments, he didn't have any of it. Any of it. Any of it. Now, now, now you see, $8 million is a lot of money. Properly invested, it could, who? God only knows what it could bring. It could bring you a hundred million. That much money properly invested could bring you a hundred million. This friend of mine ended up with zero. And about two years after that, all of his investments were poor. And, and also in business, uh, re remember this very carefully, that in good business, you don't go purchase things you don't need. It don't matter how cheap it is. It, 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 it don't matter how pretty it is. It don't matter how you might need it someday. If you don't need it now, don't buy it. Because when you do, then you're on the wrong side of prosperity. Prosperity does not run down that road. That is another road. If you take out a large loan, you buy insurance against that loan. In case something happens to you, that company will continue to exist because you insured the loan that if, in case of your death, that insurance covers the debt that you owe. Now, if, if you will do that, you will certainly have great, great, great prosperity. And then I, 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 I must say, if, if finally, uh, uh, to the lesson that don't be a big sinner. We have millionaires in the oil industry and, and great manufacturing that lost all through harlots, through, through harlots, uh, through sin, through alcohol. And, and so uh, prosperity does not remain with people that drink and, and become drunkards and, and people that are sinful and wicked. Prosperity is short-lived in your area. And, and if you don't believe me, study history and you'll find it that way. You have nothing to hand down to your children if you don't live for God and if you don't live right 
in Jesus' name, if you don't keep the Ten Commandments.